I recently made a video known as 1.20, the inventory update. It was my attempt to argue that inventory management was an issue in need of addressing, so I put together my best ideas in the hope that they might reach Moyang and give them pause for thought. If I achieved that or not, the video was a hit here on YouTube, bringing new people to the channel and stirring healthy conversation. So thanks to all of you who participated in the video's success. With your comments and feedback, I think I now see the crux of the issue and have a great solution to solve it. This solution may even bring life back to the bundles, making them even more useful and relevant, as you will learn shortly. I propose that inventory management in general was a problem, but many of you pointed out it has its time and place within the game. PvP and PvE benefit from an additional layer of challenge when choosing what and what not to put on your hotbar. The same can be said of exploring, caving and adventuring too. At a certain point, one has to decide what loot they want to keep and throw away. This decision making is part of the game and should remain, however it does not apply the same way to building. The pains of choosing from large amounts of blocks, shuffling them through your inventory and hotbar, start to grind away as increasing aesthetic complexity is punished by time sorting through blocks. So I will be presenting a core idea with multiple use cases. With help from Lizard of Oz, the two of us have discussed a solution at length and this video is its proposal. A new interface that requires no need for inventory expansions, transmutation of items, drastic changes to item stack sizes or crafting. This will be an elegant additional system that requires no necessity for anyone to learn, yet is a powerful tool that can be deployed to help players swiftly access the blocks and tools and items that they desire on their hotbar. And remember, the hotbar is where these pains are felt the most. With only 9 slots to juggle a vast array of blocks and the tools to correctly interact with them is where the friction of opening the inventory screen and dragging items around needs to be resolved. Now before I reveal the magic of this new system, it's important to express how valuable some complementing changes will be too. If you keep these in mind, you'll see this new GUI system will be very powerful and save the player much time with inventory management. It mostly revolves around shulker boxes, and in the last video I proposed two enchantments. One that lets a shulker box automatically refill an item you're using on your hotbar, and a second that uses its contents like a filter for sucking up items that you pick up. That would otherwise go straight into your inventory. My big idea here was to simply treat these as two new types of shulker box, each with their own texture to distinguish their added functionality. These could simply be crafted, a hopper for the picking up shulker box, and a dropper for the refill one. With this, the feature is much clearer to the player. I've also been using a shulker box viewer mod for so long now, I've practically forgotten that it's a mod. This is such a helpful feature, especially when paired with an ender chest. It saved me countless hours searching for items, and I don't see much reason for it not to be a part of vanilla. The bundle, after all, was built this way, so it's both possible and present in the game already. Now onto the most important detail, this new system can swap items for the player from their inventory into their hotbar and if this works with shulker boxes too, every single item can be sought out from inside the boxes and swapped onto the player's hotbar. It's like each shulker box can become an extension of the inventory space. With 27 slots for shulker boxes, that would be like having 729 stacks of blocks in total. So by introducing a new GUI, that's graphical user interface, we could get access to all of those blocks and solve some of the problems already outlined in this video. To do that, we're going to have to introduce a new button to the game, which is something I'll come back to later. For now, we're going to appreciate this amazing build and all of the details that it has. If you imagine creating this in survival, you'll know you'll be shuffling around on your hotbar between blocks over and over again. And of course, this space is already used by tools and other types of items. So let's see this new GUI in action. When I hover over these birch stairs here and I press the new button, up comes a menu. This is now locking the mouse so I can't look around and as I move my mouse around, we're essentially selecting one of these items. When I let go, it's then simply swapped down onto my hotbar. So this can be a quick and easy action where you're just making a quick selection and then it ends up right there on your hotbar. And what's really cool about this is that some of those items we can access are inside of the shulker box. And if you were keenly observing, you might have noticed that part of this was greyed out. 
And that's because not all of these materials are always accessible. With the polished blackstone, for example, there's no fence gate, fence post, or trapdoor. If we are then to select the spruce slab down here, you'll then see that the fence post is greyed out, and that's simply because we don't even have it in our inventory. So if I go to select the stone stairs, you'll see that everything else is greyed out. And a key thing to remember here is the layout of the different types of block variants. They're always going to be in the same spot, and this will allow you to use muscle memory to select exactly what you want. If you want some stairs, they're always in the upper right corner. Along with this, we have another powerful tool, which is pressing that same button, but when you're holding shift. Now what this will do is bring up your block palette. So as you'll see here, we don't get the slabs and stairs, but we get the other types of blocks that are related to this one block we're holding. So for example, all of the main copper blocks could be lumped together in this menu, and those that we didn't have were just simply grayed out. You can probably guess how immensely useful this could be for building, as these types of blocks are just the sort of things that you do detail work together with, and so you'd be able to quickly switch between the different materials that you want. Now we get to go a little further with this idea, because it's not just blocks that we can use our new button on, but also tools and weapons too. And this feature has a different interface. So when I go ahead and press the button on our tool, you'll see that we have a list here. I can move up and down the list with the selection, and then your selection is just swapped into your hotbar immediately, allowing you to quickly grab tools from inside your inventory and, of course, shulker boxes too. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking about enchantments and how do I know which tool it is if they're all so similar, and this is where I think naming comes into effect. So in here, you'll see that some of these items have actually been renamed, and so then when we go ahead and we use the menu, then you'll see that those names are there, indicating exactly what they are. So to get my Silk Touch pick, I have simply selected Doom Guy as Silk, because yes, if you haven't noticed, I am Doom Guy. So this gives players another incentive to use the anvil and rename their items. And again, it works for weapons too. So when we press the button, we get this list up. We can make our selection and I can quickly cross out my bone fun gun into the crossbow. And of course, it might have been a good idea to rename this one to multi shot. So I know which crossbow it is if I have multiple. Again, that's the point of being able to rename these items. So now let's return to this scenario again and look at that hotbar down below. If we can swap these tools out easily, then they're only really going to need one slot. And since an axe is also a weapon, you know, we could free up this space for more blocks. And maybe this could be done for other items too, like food types and ender pearls. They could be grouped with other items, easily swapped out based on what's available inside of your inventory. And this next idea could possibly take things to another level, but it's definitely something for advanced players and not an idea I fully fleshed out. But we have this button for crafting recipes that opens up a whole new interface. Well, what if we had an additional button for what we do with our new GUI feature? What I'm talking about is the ability to make your own set of blocks that appear in this menu together. Maybe it could be configured inside a new space, something similar to the saved hotbars. It's an interesting idea, but not one that I've fleshed out a lot, as I feel like the core of this idea is good enough. And again, that's probably starting to get a little too advanced for the average player. Now remember that this solution was designed with three important details in mind. One, it needs to work on all platforms, which is why it's an additional GUI that can work with Pocket Edition, on phones, up to Java on the PC and all in between. Two, its implementation will not affect how game data is stored, meaning new and old worlds alike will work with it. And three, it doesn't require the player to learn or use it by default. It will complement the game as is, allowing old players to take advantage of it, and new players won't be overburdened by its non-essential existence. However, I guess once discovered, it would be pretty hard to not use it. There is one catch, however. A new input button is required. On the PC, this is simple. On a controller, one of the four D-pad buttons could be reassigned, or the shoulder buttons could be pressed simultaneously. I also like the idea of using the middle click button or pick block button when you are not actually looking at a block. This might be a little more clumsy, however, as the player will need to get used to backing away from blocks to bring up the new GUI. So what do you think? Good idea or great idea? Leave a comment down below and subscribe if you want to catch the whole 1.20 snapshot cycle. The reveal is right around the corner, so subscribe and stay tuned. And I'll cover what's announced as soon as I can. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.